Welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to put this video yet. My guess is uh, I'm thinking I'm going to put this on my Life Post Stroke channel. Just because that's where I put all the videos at where I actually did a lot of the work on the bridge on this guitar. Remember, I did a video about two years ago where the bridge lifted almost completely. Actually, no, it came completely off the guitar. And the only things that were holding the bridge onto the guitar were them two bolts that Gibson and Epiphone used back in the 60s. So, in this video, I finished doing the work that I really wanted to do on my Epiphone. Which is right here. Is I got rid of the adjustable saddle. Not permanently. <laughs> Not permanently. So when we come back, I am going to show you what I did and then give you some sound samples. So don't go away. So as I said earlier in the in the opening part of this video, I'm not sure what channel I'm going to put this on. Um, I may put it on my Haystack channel. I don't know yet. I'm actually planning on putting it over on my Life Post Stroke channel. Man, it's hot in here today. My studio with all this soundproofing holds in a lot. It's really insulated. So, anyways, the one thing that was left to do on my 1965 Epiphone Texan which of course was made in the Gibson plant in Kalamazoo, Michigan, right alongside all of the J45s using the exact same material. So basically, this is a 1965 J45, with a few exceptions, which make it completely different from that J45. The Texan has the longer scale length, which uh, they put on a lot of Epiphones. Not all of them, but on a lot of them. And um, it's got a three, I, the, yeah, it's three quarters of an inch longer than the scale length on a J45. But basically, um, with the longer scale length, you still play, like if you play a G, it's still going to be a G. But it's going to have a different attack. Uh, it's going to have a different, it, it's hard to explain. Um, but the strings are stretched a little bit tighter to get that pitch, okay? The pitch is going to be the same. But it's going to sound different is the only way I can put it, okay? Basically, what happened was I tried using a bone insert, which allowed me to take the adjustable rosewood insert out, and I put a bone one in. And, you know, it did. It sounded pretty good. But it still had that clicky sound to it, you know? And I thought maybe there was something going bad in my saddle, in my rosewood saddle. Because this originally came with a Brazilian rosewood saddle. Okay, so so the bridge and the saddle was all rosewood. There was no bone saddle in it. So that in itself gave it another characteristic sound. Whenever you take the saddle, which is what the strings go over, okay? The hard bone saddle. Um, whenever you take that saddle and you now take it off of the top of the guitar, the way the sound transfers from that saddle down into the top is via two screws on the outside. That's it. The way for a guitar to sound like all the guitars that you hear today and know and love is that saddle sits down into a very snugly fit trot in the rosewood bridge, right? And so when you strum your strings, that the vibrations from the strings goes right through that bone saddle, right into that rosewood bridge, through the Sitka spruce top, into that bridge plate, and then just vibrates from there on out. And again, with the adjustable saddle, and I'll put some B-roll in here and let you guys see what I'm talking about. Um, you basically had two screws going down into two big nuts. Now, I did not remove the nuts from the top of this guitar. Because I want them to be there in case somebody in the future wants to take this guitar back to stock. They can. I did not affect this guitar going back to stock in any way, shape, or form. 
Um, but anyways, back to the saddle. And what happens is in those two big giant brass bolts, you have, or nuts, you have two bolts that screw down into that. And those two bolts go through, <laughs> the saddle has two little claws on the end, which goes around those bolts. Now those bolts have, well, you'll see in the B-roll. Okay, but basically what happens is the saddle sits on those bolts like that. And it's actually up off of the top of the guitar. The sound transfer goes through the saddle into the bolts along each side and then down into the uh into the top and you know and it, it's just not the best thing to have you know for a really really good sounding guitar and i always wondered why the brand new texans that you can order from gibson sounds so amazing and that's it you know it's just that and i know a lot of people are going to argue and they're going to say well the beatles made a lot of really good music back in the 60s and yes they did and yes, this guitar now does not sound exactly like it did with that adjustable saddle. But I'm willing to, you know, give up that clickiness for that good sound. And to be honest with you guys, if you are not really a, a hardcore uh, audio, uh, an audio, I just call people that are really into music audiophiles, um, you know, you may not even notice the difference. And I, this is not a video to show the comparison between the two, okay? Uh, I, may, I may make a video like that later on. We'll see. Like I said before, on this channel, uh, this is where I put everything that doesn't make it over onto my main channel. And I'm pretty laxed about what I put over here. I don't go crazy with the editing and all that. Uh, so I may, I may actually do a video um, and, uh, and pull in pieces from my other videos that I uploaded because I have videos on the Rosewood adjustable saddle and the Bone adjustable saddle. And I'll try to play the same songs that I played on those. Because on those two videos, I played the exact same songs. So we could compare them. And I may do it again on this. And let you guys hear the difference between the altered saddle that I did. And then the adjustable saddle with both Rosewood and Bone. We'll think about that maybe later in the future. So that might be a video... Uh, that I might think about putting on this channel later on. So be looking for that. Um, how y'all doing? I know I haven't talked to you in a long time over here. Yes, um, we've had a lot of things going on in the family. Um, I've had some issues with my health. And no, everything is great. So don't know, you know, nothing going on with the old stroke or anything like that. Um, everything's fine. Uh, you know how doctors are. They just get a little uh, overly worried about you. And, uh, and it turned out to be nothing. So, um, that and Noah's graduation is what has been keeping me away from making videos. Now that everything's cooled down, um, I figured I gotta get back into making videos again. And I wanted to really work on getting my Epiphone where I want it. Now, I will tell you guys right now that the, the string height on this is about as high is I would want it. Now, um, it could go a little higher. Some people actually like string height a little higher than this. Um, I, and I could actually take it down a little bit more. I got plenty of room to go down on the saddle. I want it right, I like it right where it's at. But to be honest with you, it may have one more adjustment in that saddle, and then I think this thing's gonna need a neck reset. But as it stands right now, I got plenty of room in my truss rod for adjustment. Uh, and I have this set right where I right where I like it. I like just a little bit a uh, little bit of relief about 0 0.05 between or 0 06 between the, the string and the frets. Uh, and that's what I have right in the center. And um, so it's good. It's good to go. And I again I have a little bit of room to go yet on that saddle. But you guys can see the work we did. And again, it's not perfect, but there is no glue on that whatsoever. If I want to go back to stock and put all the hardware back into this, it's easy to do. Well, it's not easy. <laughs> I would have, because uh, that's a tightly fit piece of wood. I took a lot of time making sure that I fit that as close as I could and as snug as I could get it without putting too much pressure where it would crack the bridge, you know, over time. But 
yet not loose enough to where it would just fall out. You know, it it when it, when I pushed it in, you could hear a you could hear like a, a tink tink tink. You know, as I was pushing it in, but you know, you could grab it with a pair of plastic pliers and pull it out. So it's perfect. Um, but if I have to take this out for whatever reason, since I have it sanded down and scraped down right flush with the original bridge, um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to destroy it to get it out. I don't know. It, if I can get a little pick in there, I might be able to pull it out. Who, who knows? Anyways, guys, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and jump to letting you guys hear what this thing sounds like. And, uh, and then I'll go ahead and close this video out. So let's go ahead and let you guys hear what this thing sounds like now. All right, sound sample with non-adjustable saddle. Solid saddle going into rosewood and all that metal crap gone. Well, not permanently, but because I can always take this back to the way it was. Very easily, I might add. Go through the chords. A. B. C. D. F and G
I can't believe the difference in the sound of this guitar. Take a look at that work. I mean, yeah, it's not perfect. You can see a little bit of cracks around the edges where I couldn't get it uh, perfectly rounded to the way it was routed. But, and that's not glued in, people. I can pull that out, although it's pretty tight. I mean, not super tight, but I'd have to probably stick <laughs> a uh, something sharp into the insert that I put in. I'd have to stick it into the wood so I could pry up on it, but there you go. No longer is the saddle uncoupled from the bridge and the top of the guitar. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, now, I didn't get Noah to play it because Noah has been working uh, a lot since he graduated, and he has actually not played a guitar in over a month and a half. So the calluses on his fingers are hardly there at all, and um, he really didn't want to play and get on camera if he wasn't going to be able to play uh, to. Uh, the level where he is, you know, comfortable with being videoed, recorded, videoed. You know what I mean. Um, but I think the, I think what I did with the guitar should give you a very good representation of how the guitar sounds. Uh, and hopefully I didn't play anything that I'm going to get a YouTube strike for. We'll see. Um, but that's all I have, guys. Uh, a lot of work went into this guitar, and I mean a ton of work. And all of it was done by me. Um, I could just imagine what it would have cost for me to send that out to a luthier and had it done professionally. I'll tell you one thing, it would have looked a little better, at least, you know, on the outer corners, probably. But, um, you know, I, I was a carpenter for all my life. So I figured if, you know, I built cabinets before and I was very meticulous with that. Why can't I do this? Well, you know why? I don't have the tools. <laughs> That's why. Uh, so I, I, I went and bought a few cheap tools um not the ones i needed but things that would suffice when used a little crazy like so all right guys i've kept you way too long um i just want to thank each and every one of you for watching and i will try to put more videos over here on this channel um so be looking for that uh if you guys have any suggestions or any questions on strokes you know if you want to know anything about strokes or uh, if you have, if you've had a stroke and you just want to talk about it, I'm here. Let me, let, you know, I, I will comment and write back to you. Uh, you know, I, I love hearing from people who have, who have been in the same situation as myself because it sucks. And yes, I'm sorry for using that word, but it does. It sucks. It really changes your entire life. Uh, yeah, okay, guitars. Man, I used to be, I used to consider myself pretty dang good. I played guitar since I was about nine, ten, and, um, I considered myself pretty good. Now, with my right side gone, I still, I can use it, but I can't feel anything. And with my right side not being able to control how I hold a pick, I, I have no strumming left. So, I can hold a chord. And I can do some straight down strums with a specially adapted pick. Uh, but, but here I am rambling. I'm making the video go longer. But anyways, guys, you you get the gist. If you have anything you want to comment about, comment below. Um, I pride myself in uh, answering every single comment. So, Alright, 
uh, that's all for this video. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching, and I will see you all on the next one. Mm-hmm.